question test. They're, they're pretty much the same test. So as long as you do it this way, you're fine. Because what we're trying to do is. I was saying that they're the same test. They're the same test. Because basically, if you look on the sheet, you know, and if you look in different tests, text, they're the same test, just with different names. You're either actively or passively having the patient laterally flex their head, extend in a little bit of rotation. You're going to use a little bit of overpressure. So you're going to bring them to the side, rotate, and push down. What you're doing is you're, you're, you're causing that IVF to compress around that nerve. That will then cause sometimes, not sometimes, but if it's a positive test for radicular pain, it's going to cause pain into the shoulder or down the arm. What do you have laterally flex? Rotate and extend and, and overpressure. Localized pain indicates a facet lesion, kind of like a Kemp's test. You know, again, you're doing those same motions as you are with Kemp's, except you're using overpressure. That's for pain? that would be like a nerve root lesion or or a disc lesion, because you're encroaching that IVF. So for Jackson's or for the frame in the Maxwell foraminal compression test. I'll eliminate one of those. You know, they're the, pretty much the same test, and it'll just keep it easy for you guys. Just think about what you're trying to do. So do you, I, I got, what is for, what is for positive means, what you do, but what, um, what is, what's the test for exactly? Nerve root lesion? So like a, a disc lesion? A nerve root lesion. And for, for a radicular pain, so if I bring you to the side and I push down, positive sign for radicular pain would be pain all the way down the arm. That would be a nerve root lesion. If it's local pain, it's just going to be a, a facet lesion. Because like I said, it's like a, like a Kemp's test. Cervical distraction test. So with the cervical distraction test, two ways you can do it. You can come in this way, support the jaw, support the occiput, and you're going to distract or lift up. Again, if there is IVF lesion, you know, a pinched nerve, disc lesion that's causing irritation of that nerve, when you lift up, you're now taking that pressure off of the nerve. So that could be a sign that they're, you know, further confirming uh, a disc lesion or, or a pinched nerve type of a lesion. If it increases the pain, it can be a sign of muscle spasm or ligamentous or, or tendinous injury because now you're overstretching those soft tissues and the body's going to react by guarding and it's going to hurt. So like I said, two ways to do it. This way is the one way, holding the jaw, holding the occiput, lifting up that way. <laughs> Other way, and I prefer this way, is cupping the occiput and coming up that way. I just find people with TMJ issues, if you do it the, the first way, it can irritate, it's going to slam the condyles and TMJ into each other. So I just found this way to be better. <laughs> If there's pain, muscle spasm, uh, or sprain strain, soft tissue type of thing, because now you're overstretching that, that, that joint capsule or those ligaments or those tendons, and the body's going to react and go into pain to try to guard or protect itself. So to Hall's test, this is going to be the patient laying down. And while they're laying down, you're going to flex their chin into their chest. Normally, that shouldn't hurt. But sometimes, if, if there's, let's say, a motor vehicle accident, you suspect uh, some sort of soft tissue lesion, some, some ligamentous lesion, that's going to strain those ligaments, and that's going to be positive for a more diffuse pain. Sometimes, we talked about last week, with a fracture, like a C7 avulsion fracture, by having them flex their head and you're putting that pressure there, it's going to irritate that avulsion fracture, if there is an avulsion fracture. That's going to be a more localized pain. <laughs> K 
pain in the spine, pain in the cervical or, or, or upper thoracic spine. More diffuse pain is going to be a, a finding of a ligamentous injury. Localized pain, pinpoint pain, you know, like around like one of the spinuses could be a sign of an avulsion rash. The shoulder depressor test. Remember this test, the patient, again, they're lying down, and you're going to, can I have somebody up here, please? It's just going to be easier. So if we're doing left side, you're going to laterally flex the head to the right. With the, your left hand, you're going to push that shoulder down. So you're going to push towards the, the feet. Again, if there is any... We talked about nerve root adhesions or nerve root lesions. You're putting traction on those nerve roots, so that's going to be positive for pain. So a positive finding would be pain in, in the neck. Sometimes it'll cause radiation pain down the arm, and that's you know nerve root adhesions or, or nerve root lesions. Thank you. The Cody sign. If a, this can be just a, a sign or can be you can use it as a test too. If you have the patient or the patient comes in with their hand on top of their head, that's a positive for Cody sign. So when we think about the, the nerves, the, the nerves that come out of the neck, the brachial plexus, if there's any irritation or inflammation of those nerves, when they have that arm down to the side, it's putting a lot of tension on the dagger, you're going to put tension on all those nerves. So by then having that arm in their, you know, putting their hands in their pockets or just normal carrying of their arm, just going to irritate that if there's an IVF lesion, a nerve root lesion. So when they put their hand on top of their head, it's going to slack that nerve and it's going to make it feel better. So that's a positive for Cody sign. Again, it could be just a sign that you walk into the room and they have their arm up like this because it's just more comfortable. Or you can say, hey, if you put your hand on top of your head, does that make it feel better? And that, that's a sign that there's, you know, irritation to the nerve roots or inflammation. Rust sign. Rust sign, remember, if a patient, let's say they ran a motor vehicle accident, they walk into your office and they're holding the sides of their neck and they just won't let go. Rust sign is usually a sign that there's gross instability of the cervical spine or a cervical spine fracture, usually C1, C2 fracture. This is something, if somebody comes into your office like this, they were just in a car accident, you have a collar, put them in a collar and get them to the emergency room to get, get x-rays to make sure there's not a fracture. I've never really seen anybody walk into my office doing this that didn't have a fracture or, or pretty, pretty severe instability of your cervical spine. And usually it's, it's, it's due to a motor vehicle accident. But we talked about the best way to evaluate that is going to be an x-ray. And remember, we talked about it's usually what they call a data series. You know, your anterior posterior open mouth, your, your lateral view, your anterior posterior views, your obliques, and flexion and extension. George's test. That's te checking the vertebral basilar artery. So this can be done two ways. You can either have the patient sitting doing it or laying down and doing it. I prefer sitting because laying down is pretty aggressive because you're going to have them, you know, extend their head off the table, uh, extend and then rotate to one side, hold it for 30 to 60 seconds, and then go to the other side and hold it for 30 to 60 seconds. And that can cause dizziness. And that's a positive test. I find it's easier to have them do it, you know, can observe them easier if they're sitting and doing it, so have them extend and look over their shoulder, hold that position. Watch their eyes. Do their eyes, do they have a normal gaze? Do their eyes start, is there any nystagmus? Do their eyes start to bounce at all? By doing this, do they have, are they starting to sweat profusely? Or are they starting to black out or become lightheaded? That's a positive sign. It's occluding that, that, that artery that goes through Remember the transverse processes about C6 to, to, to C1. There's an occlusion there. If you find a positive George's test, you would have the patient then follow up with their, their depending on how their symptoms are, 
You know, if they're having drop attacks, they're just passing out, that's an emergency. You have to get them out, get them to the, to the hospital. But if there's just some dizziness, you might then want to, remember we talked about using the, uh, the bell of the stethoscope, auscultate, and see if you hear any buoys, that, that, that swishing noise in the arteries. You know, and, and you might even have them follow up with their, their primary care doc to get an ultrasound to evaluate, you know, those arteries to see if there's an occlusion, especially if they're a smoker, smoker, birth, birth control, high cholesterol, hypertension type of patients, you know, that would be something that you might want to encourage them to, to get checked into further. Last but not least, O'Donohue's maneuver. Remember, this is for ligamentous injury, uh, tendinous injury, muscular injury. Again, a trauma, usually a car accident, you know, a sprain, strain type of an injury. With O'Donohue's maneuver, you're going to have them do active range of motion first, you know, flexion, extension. Then you're going to do passive range of motion on the patient, and then you're going to do active resistive range of motion. When there's pain with all of those, it's usually an indication of a ligamentous and a tendinous type of an injury. Brain strain. That's a diagnosis. Just flexion and extension? Or? And it was the full, full range of motion. Okay. I'm sorry, flexion, extension, lateral flexion, and rotation. Have them do it all. Any questions on cervical spine? Ligamentous uh, tendinous injury, sprain strain. It's confirming a sprain strain injury. Yeah, then you do it. Then you do it. Yep, exactly. 